Hello guys and welcome to a new Stone Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you game one of the best of three between Gonzo and Presta John in the first semi-final in season three of the Steel Division 2 league. Today they are playing on Slutsk East and both players have decided to play on the allied side. So on our left in the red team we have Gonzo using the third Canadian and the flatline deployment type. And on our right in the blue team we have Presta John using the 44th Guards Rifles and the Maverick deployment type. Both players are going to be on their preferred deployment type. Uh, Gonzo well known for his use of flatline and Presta John previously used a Maverick uh, third armoured to gain victory which was nicely done. Uh, relied a lot on the jumbos. Now the other thing to consider is of course the divisions themselves. The Canadian definitely perceived to be one of the best divisions currently in the game in 1v1 and on the 44th side of things they play similar they just lack the strengths or some of the strengths that the 3rd Canadian has like the 3rd Canadian off map and the 3rd Canadian air force. Either way let's have a look at some of the units going down. Gonzo here going to be relying a lot on Vickers HMGs on this top side. It's also going to be a six pounder AT gun as well as two defense group coming in the white trucks. White trucks are nice, they are armored vehicles, they are very fast transports and then he's got a rifle here in the CMP. Further down uh, we do see more defense group. I'm surprised he's using defense group, I don't find much value in defense groups personally. Uh, they can be broken down very easily by larger squads uh, but there is a six pounder following those up and on the bottom side we see sniper scouts, two sniper scouts behind three defense group and a rifle leader with the Humber Mark III. Further up, two Sherman 5 DDs with the Humber Mark III's. Bunch of rifles, four rifles there, two rifles with Piat and the six pounder. Okie dokie, over to the side of the 44th. On the top, it's going to be a sniper, two flamers, and a 45mm AT gun. Uh, towards the center, we've got two flamers, two snipers. Another flamer there with the PTRS squad, that's the AT rifle. And there's going to be an AT gun, another AT rifle, and two Avtos. And on the bottom, we see more of the same sort of setup. Instead of Avtos, he's got Kavadia for the town. And he's going to be using a commander from the start with the T3485 1943. Interesting indeed. So the 44 is quite nice because it does have the access to the T3485s, which can certainly cut down on the Sherman 5s so if he can make good use of that then Presta John might find an advantage in the armor department. Of course Gonzo's third Canadian can make use of fireflies uh, so that might allow Gonzo to help himself out in phase B if needed uh, but either way I'm just trying to consider where each player will get an advantage and personally I think it's all going to come down to the town as usual on Slutsk East. It's going to be a big old brawl over the top side of this town. Holding the high ground here is vital uh, for both players. It's easier for Prester John to get a foothold on the hill than it is Gonzo because if Prester John manages to push Gonzo off that gives him cover of the reinforcing roads into all of these objectives behind. Uh, which can then make it a lot easier for Presta John to continue his push. Whereas on the side of Gonzo, even if he breaks through, he's still got to fight through the town for most of the uh, ground on this bottom side. But interesting to see the priorities of both players. Presta John pushing quite a lot to the center. He's got the uh, PTRS and Okdemachiki going there. He's got a 45 mil that's already unloaded, looking to snipe some defense group before they get to the bottom side. Now these defense group though, they will work quite well against smaller squads like the Oknamachiki and the PTRSs as long as Gonzo can micro them effectively. On the top side, Sniper's currently getting hit by the Rifles, the Vickers, HMG and the Defense Group. Hasn't lost a man just yet. It's getting quite a lot of snipes in there but that will eventually go down. Uh, these Defense Group are coming under fire as well. This is why I really don't like Defense Group because they're five man squads and they do simply get taken out uh, by these Oknemachiki Flamer squads quite easily indeed. And both of them got forced out there. The defense group getting hit very hard by the double sniper. PTRS looking for some kills onto the Humber Mark 3s. Doesn't find one. Rifles take care of those. But these are three star rifles that 
or Cavadia, sorry, that the rifles need to get through now. Vizivod with the commander up on this hill is going to make a big difference. This three also in a nice position to help clean up these Humber Mark threes if they show themselves. Uh, looks like the Avtos have managed to get on top of the defense group, and the defense group are going to be cut down. However, Gonzo he is finding shots onto the Flamer squad in the building. Can he take them out with the defense group? He can. That's going to save the Vickers from dying. And Gonzo maintains his hold on the top three flags. Now the top side of this map is where somewhere, or somewhere where Gonzo can maybe play around uh, quite a lot because of his air force backing him up. We haven't seen any of that come into play just yet, so let's focus on this infantry engagement. The Gavardia currently getting pinned down pretty quickly with the help of these Humber Mark III's, which are providing that 15mm APHE support. More Gavardia on the way, though. That's another six squads coming into play. I think uh, Presta John identified the concentration of forces from Gonzo and is looking to match it. Going to have to unload these two Gavardia early. Uh, this six pounder position is very cheeky. Gets line of sight down this road. Potential for sn for transport snipes there. Presta John doesn't let it happen. Now moving up his T3485 to finish off some of these Humbers potentially. He's also got to work out a way to clean up the Sherman 5s. Now Gonzo does have got rifles with Piat. So the Piats can deal with the T3485 if it does get too close. But on this top side in the meantime Presta John is going to be bringing in three OB25s. These are infantry guns, uh, which are going to be able to help clean up the Vickers HMGs in the open. Can also potentially do some serious damage to Shermans at range with their heat rounds. 37mm AA already on the way from Presser John. He is anticipating air moves at, at the moment. New sniper on the way to give sight for these OBs. Let's see if these OBs, though, can get the penetration that they need onto the Sherman 5. Sniper also joining on the top side to give maybe line of sight to the 45. Anyway, the abundance of Gavardi here is allowing uh, Presta John to make a little bit of a dent into some of these rifles. A lovely use of this Avto to clean up the AT gun and it looks like the Sherman 5 did go down eventually to those OB25s. It's going to be replaced. Priest DD also on the way. The DD can certainly... Uh, do some serious damage to support weapons if it doesn't die just as quickly itself. The 50mm of frontal armor on those Priest DDs just isn't anything special, and therefore an AT gun, a light AT gun, or in this case the infantry gun, could probably kill them off. Although the infantry guns, I reckon they're probably out of ammunition at that range engagement. One of them is, the other one is not. That's pretty important if uh, we, we want to assess the effectiveness that Priest DD will have. Off map has arrived. I mentioned how the 3rd Canadian can trump the 44th with its off map and the ram has come in with the 140 mil off map. Has a potential to do quite a lot of damage here. Some hits on the edge might manage to kill the 37. He could also take down the VZ Vod, which would remove a lot of the leadership on these Gavardia which is pretty important. These two rifles though got a bit of ahead of themselves and they've been left out and now the T-3476s are going to clean them up. More Avtos on the way. I do like the use of Avtos so far from Presta John. Usually a unit that I'm not too confident in using myself. I feel like they do suffer, especially in like town engagements. Maybe not so much in heavy cover because you can uh, micro the 100 meter range. Uh, but oh, the off map. <laughs> Was that the off map alongside the Sherman 5? Managed to take out the T-34. That was very nice indeed. That off map did pin a lot of these troops, but the leader is not pinned down, so the Gavardia will not surrender. Avto is going to be forced to unload by the sniper in the tower. OBs now have line of sight onto the defense group and the Vickers HMG. They're going to be trying to unseat them from the center of the map on that top side so that the two flags owned by Gonzo at this point go back in Prestigeon's favor. Very, very close fight so far. Sniper goes down on the top side of the town. These two Gavardi are very low on health. And it looks like the Vizivod is under pressure. Vizivod's going to have to do a runner. Super important. The artillery is coming down on both sides now as Presta John brings in a 152mm off map of his own. Combat going to be moving back. Uh, Vizivod 
they're following just so that they can stay in better positions to maintain the three star veterancy onto these Gavardia without having the commander at risk itself. Uh, more Gavardia arriving to reinforce another T-34-76 on the way. These T-34-76 1942s are pretty good at taking out Shermans. They do match them in armor and penetration, more or less. In this case, looks like the off map is going to be the one to take down the Sherman 5, as the Sherman 5 did manage to clean up both the T-34-76-1943 uh, and, well, the sorry, that was an 85 and a 1942-76. Gavardia, they're going to get taken out by the rifles and the Humber backing those up. Those Avtos did get found at range briefly. Now we can see the OB go down to the Sherman 5. So this OB is also out of heat rounds, which means the Sherman's definitely got an easy job trying to take out these weapons. The 45mm AT gun just doesn't have the penetration to deal with a Sherman, uh, especially in the front armor. So these Cavardia now moving up. There's three more Cavardia every tick. It looks like Preston John's buying three Cavardia and the T-34 76 1942s. Now these Gavardias, they are they are only 20 points apiece. Uh, Avtos, I think, are also pretty cheap, 25 points. Gavardia can hold the line very well. Both players still using their off map though. I feel like Presta John's off map, the one that he just landed, wasn't terribly effective. But this one into the forest on top of the Sherman 5 could do a lot of work. And if it hits the mark properly and the T-34-76-1942 pushes through, then Presser John could take these flags and the edge of the hill off Gonzo and that would be nicely done indeed. Now these Gavardia Argo going to unload potentially underneath this off map. Well, they might not even unload at all if the shells land in time. He's just trying to force it through there. No, nope, one of them goes down. The Avto died. There was two Cavardia and an Avto. Avto died. I guess it's probably the best outcome. Obviously the Avtos cost more, but in the grand scheme of things, the Cavardia are probably more effective at pushing at range. So having them available over the Avtos is nice. Good kill onto the Sherman 5 there. This Humber Mark 3 is just currently running down the OB. Can it kill it off? Yes, it can. Takes them out. Nicely done. German 5 on the top side takes out the 45mm AT gun. And things currently sitting 13 to 11 in favour of Presta John. So Gonzo has been on the back foot for a little while. His tickets have been drained, but he's not out of it yet. With the Sherman 5s constantly coming into play, it looks like Presta John's going to have to try and deal with that. And he's going to be bringing in another T-34-85-1943 uh, to maybe take them out at a distance. With the 145 mils of penetration, he can engage Sherman 5s quite convincingly. Are the rifles here? They're trying to get the better of this this 3. If Gonzo can find that kill, that's really good. No, he's going to fall those back just before they do. The Avtos were chunking him quite a bit. Good kill by the T-34, taking out the Humber 3 on the bottom side of the town. These rifles still standing in Presta John's way though, needs to get that Visivod forward so that he can provide the three star veterancy to these Cavardia. Without it, these rifles will trade a lot better than they otherwise would. On this top side of the map currently, Presta John is only holding with snipers and a couple of flamethrowers. So, a tough position uh, for Presta John now on the top side. These two T 3485 1943s will be able to make quite a bit of a difference. They match up again to the Sherman 5s very well. And he's also got a leader following the T-3485 on the bottom side of the mid. Uh, which is going to make that 3-star veterancy. So they're going to be pretty scary to go up against. The Gavardia are still doing a reasonable amount of damage. The T-3476 here looking for the engagement with the Sherman 5. It hasn't stopped though. Which could be a mistake. Both trade blows. Both have taken damage. Whichever shoots first will win the trade. Sherman 5. Oh, the Sherman 5 bounced at that range. That was unlucky. T-34 bounces another one as well from the next Sherman that comes up the hill. Gets the penetrating shot. If it stays alive, that would be lucky. Two T-34s now going down. The Firefly makes short work of another T-34-76. This 3 
trying to get the kill in there, bouncing all day long. But this is not good news for Gonzo. Gonzo's really in trouble here. These Gavardia, again, if they make it to the edge of the hill, that does put a lot of pressure on Gonzo to hold these extra flags behind. So the two T3485s on the top are just enough for Gonzo to have to fall back. They're almost the perfect counter to a Sherman push. And that's going to allow Prester John to get his support weapons back into position and his infantry to hold the flag. This three does now go down to the rifles that fell back previously. Unfortunate for Prester John that he did lose that. Got the uh, 152 moving up. I guess he's going to try and look for an off map onto this area to maybe remove the six pounder. Okay, more Gavardia on the way. SU-76 PTs coming in. Another off map. We are now in phase B. So loads of points for Prester John to spend. Meanwhile on the side of Gonzo, he's also going for more rifles. Has fallen back with the Firefly for the time being. Trying to get into a different position. Potentially to take out the T-3476 on the hill. It looks like he's going to maybe use the veterancy from the commander to engage that from a distance, which would be really smart because he does have the equivalent of a 17-pounder in the turret of that Firefly, which can yeah, make short work of those T-34s. There's three engaging the rifles as the Avtos run on. The rifles will then get taken out by the submachine guns very quickly. This T-3485 took a side shot from the 6-pounder on the hill. Now going to be engaged... By the Sherman, although the Sherman's actually being engaged by the AT gun, not the T-3485. Well, this could be the off map that Prester John needs to push off this hill. That would be a really, really good position to be in. The Sh Firefly did manage to unload one of the Gavardia and a second. No kills though, which is unfortunate. Two star veterancy on that Firefly, you'd expect it to hit the the mark on these targets, but unfortunately not. And the T-34 that was on the hill did survive, it just moved up. Yeah, lovely off map, that is going to hit perfectly, but Prestigeon needs something to follow it up. And currently he's pinned down his own Gavardia because they were too close. So that may kind of stop Prestigeon from pulling the trigger. As much as he'd want to and maybe it will leave Gonzo with just enough infantry on top of the hill that he can hold in time to get the 381 mil off map on his side of things <laughs> to come in and do plenty of damage. Now the push here from Presser John has found the defense group of Gonzo. Uh, they did have the extra veterancy from the rifle leader. The rifle leader also managing to get a kill there uh, but these defense group won't last long against 10 man squads so Looks like Gonzo might even lose the bottom side of this town unless the rifles here, the six rifles he's invested in, can help in time. 152 mil off map. I'm not entirely sure what that's going for. It looks like he may be dropping an off map here somewhere shortly. SU-76Ms looking for the snipes onto the rifles. He's also got the 45 mil on the main road. Okay, Gonzo's not going to let another one go down. Doesn't make the same mistake twice. Presta John has got to the edge of this hill, but there's going to be some big old off-map land in there. We'll make sure to zoom in on those massive explosions. I kind of feel like with the T-3485s on the top side, with just one unit of infantry capturing this flag would all be Presta John needs in order to continue taking tickets off Gonzo. Lovely off-map though from Presta John. This will do a nice chunk of damage, and if he can follow through, he could take two flags here, honestly. There are more rifles on the way, though. Gonzo recognizes his weakness. Here comes the big off map from the Canadians. That did a lot of damage. Those infantry in disarray. Gonzo's own infantry also getting pinned a little, though. And yeah, the VZ Vod go down. That's no more veterancy for those Gavardia. That makes the combat completely useless. Next off-map strike might kill Presta John's off-map, unless there's none left in that. I haven't been really keeping count very well. GV Comrati do make it up. That's now two star Gavardia on the side of Presta John. Gonzo's going to try and retreat from the off-map. See how much damage he takes. So far, it's so good. It hasn't been too bad for Gonzo. But 
Prestigeon really needs to make sure he's moving up, taking that flag, solidifying that objective. He's got the Gavadi DP on the way now as well. Gavadi DP with those two machine guns makes them much more difficult to deal with at range. But, oh, there it goes. How did that not kill the 152? It killed the tank. The T-34-85 went down, but the 152 mil off map survived. That's quite something. Right, Cavadia do manage to take out one of the rifles by surrendering it. Cavadia are moving up. Cavadia DP have arrived. Avtos take out the last of the defense group on the bottom side. Presser John still sitting at 13 to 11. Can he take a game from Gonzo? Gonzo still putting up a good fight. And it's not, it's far from over. Oh, that's a mistake from Prester John losing an infantry squad there completely unnecessarily. And this Gavardia DP also in the open for no apparent reason could have easily unloaded those defensively if he wanted to. But now the big old off map's going to come down. It's going to pin down all of this infantry in the town and the Firefly could just drive on through. Also, the rifle's ready to run forwards, take back that flag. It's 12 to 12. Looks like Presser John's building up for a topside push. Two snipers moving forwards now, looking for the eyes onto these two rifle squads so that he can contest the flags in the centre of the open. Nice off map again from Presser John. We'll push Gonzo back off the hill, hopefully for him. Yeah, Gonzo just needs to keep up the pressure with the rifles. That will force the Gavardia to keep falling back. T-34-85. And it's currently just engaging the rifles. I thought that might have line of sight onto the Firefly or something. But I was going to say the Firefly would win that engagement quite significantly. More snipers on the way. Gavardia DP to the bottom side. Attack ping comes down from Prestigeon onto the 17 pounder. He has spotted that now. Probably just marked it because he couldn't see it fire from a distance. So I just wanted to uh, make sure that he didn't get complacent. Gavardia pushing into the off map. Off map's just about finishing up. The six pounder has survived so far. Flag back in the hands of Presta John. Avto's moving up here. Six pound takes care of those in the in the transport though. I think some of these transport snipes might start to add up quite a bit for Presta John. Like losing his infantry availability is not too great. I think the 3rd Canadians have a lot of infantry if they want it in the form of the rifles. TU-2S, can the two 250kg bombs get the job done? We shall see. Engagements still continue on the bottom side as the Gavardia DP move up. 17 pounder does go down nicely done triple sniper still pushing up onto this objective looks like these rifles will eventually get pinned down with the help of the t-34s and that's gonna allow prestigeon to take back that flag in the open but he could have definitely held that much sooner if he just had a gavardia squad sitting in the open further back out of range of the machine guns either way prestigeon's gavardia Chewing up those rifles, T-34 helping out as well. It's funny how just as Presta John takes one flag, he loses another somewhere else. You can just see it comes down to the fact that Gonzo is really on point with his uh, counterplay, the counter aggression. A big push coming now from Presta John. That is a solid seven squads of Gavaria covered by the sniper and the T-34-85. He's trying to break down the Rifles and the Vickers HMG here, which are backed up by the rifle leader, uh, which is giving them the extra veterancy. TU-2S could pin the whole lot. It's actually going for the AT gun. Looks like he had eyes on the six-pounder and wants to take that out. If he does, that might allow his T-34 to continue forwards unimpeded. Does manage to clean it up. Also, the front line is going to push forwards quite significantly following up that bombing strike. And that will show Prester John that he did hit the mark very well. Another off map on the way on the side of Gonzo. But Prester John has pretty much taken the hill now. If he spreads out his infantry enough, captures his flag above him, Prester John 
it will be able to go 15 to 9 and start a double tick on Gonzo. And I've never really seen Gonzo be in this position. He's normally a very aggressive player. He does get ahead in the early game. And usually games that are close against Gonzo are those at which uh, people try and push back on him in the late game. But Presta John has been keeping up the aggression just as much as Gonzo and it's worked out really well for him so far especially with the investment into the two star t3485s that's been a trump card to all of the Sherman play that Gonzo has been trying to use so he's got the two t3485 1943s backed up by a leader to make them three star because he purchased them in at two star veterancy really really nice another Gavali on the bottom side now he is a bit outnumbered down here, even with that new squad arriving. Gonzo could make a push off the 381 mil off map. Not too much to gain though, you've got to consider that. Uh, the flag is all the way back here, so even if the off map did make all of these units fall back, they'd just end up on the flag anyway, and there would be nothing to gain. But he's got to do something. The Cavadia have managed to chew through the rifles and the Vickers HMG on the top side. German 3 currently having a go at some of the Gavardia. The T-3485 moving into position and will soon be backed up by two SU-76s. We're currently 23 minutes into the game, so we are now into Phase C. Presta John's income has dropped significantly, and that may allow Gonzo to get back in the game if he has enough infantry to back him up, because he'll have quite a lot of Shermans most likely uh, ready to go. So we'll see if uh, that actually comes into play. More T-3485s coming out. Presta John's really looking to control this open ground. And he's got to make sure he does it. Otherwise, a lot of this is not has not been worth it at all. 17-pounder does get unloaded by Gonzo. Doesn't manage to get a shot off because he identifies it early. TU-2S now coming in for the bombing strike. Now, it's kind of amusing how... I mentioned how Gonzo would have the artillery and air force advantage, but honestly, Presta John's done a great job of using his off map, the 152 off map, which is probably one of my favorite calibers of off map in the game, as well as these TU-2S bombers, which are pretty fast for the payload they can deliver. And well, takes out the 17 pounder clearly there or cleanly. Mosquito coming in for the kill onto the IL-2 rocket plane. I was looking for the kill onto the Sherman 3, but missed out. 381 mil off map now coming down on top of the hill. So once again, let's see if these Gavardia can survive. There are two really low health squads there. The Gavardia DP on the top side of that off map did go down very quickly indeed. Gavardia can maintain their engagement on the bottom side. But Gonzo's done all he needs to right now, which is just stop the double tick. It's 14 to 10. And then I guess Gonzo from here on can just try and bleed Presta John dry. But we will see. Mosquito coming in for a strafing run. Not going to hit anything at all. There's Gavardia moving up. They put themselves in a dodgy position. I feel like there has been times where Presta John has advanced with a unit, but he hasn't really paid too much attention to it and it's caused it to die very easily there was the two units of Gavardia that came into the town on the bottom side and that caused one to die in a transport and one to unload in the open which was really really unfortunate uh, TU2S on the way though uh, that TU2S wouldn't do bad to bomb the firefly right now honestly TU2S will survive two frontal strikes from the mosquitoes and those mosquitoes, I think, will have trouble getting back onto the TU-2S, especially with the cover from the 37mm AA, which is three-star veterancy. TU-2S should get out in time. As I mentioned, it is pretty quick. Mosquitoes, of course, are fast as well at the 550 kilometers per hour. But not fast enough this time. I didn't think that these rifles would be able to be broken down so easily on the side of Gonzo by the Cavalier DP, but it just goes to show how much veterancy can make a difference. 
Gonzo's rifles, of course, don't have any venerancy, whilst Presto John has two star venerancy on his Gavardias, and that gives him that extra damage resistance that allows him to trade so much better. Again, three star venerancy Gavardia taking out the rifles. But it kind of feels like Presto John's lacking in infantry. Much more so than Gonzo. Gonzo's bringing in more rifles. We don't see Presto John bringing in three infantry squads every minute like he was before. He's reliant very much more now on armor with the armor on the top side, the two T-34s in the open. Be moving through the bottom of the top. And then all of these armor pieces on the top side there. So six pounder Sherman three are all that stand in the way of this armor push. I'm surprised to see that Presto John isn't moving these Gavardia at all. Uh, at this point, especially if he is low on units, he's going to want to seal the deal ASAP. And currently he's at 15, and 15 to 9, he'd win in 7 minutes and 40 seconds. So if he keeps the pressure up, he keeps attacking forwards, then he might just give himself enough time to win the game as long as he can maintain his hold on those flags. IL-2 and TU-2S coming in again. On this bottom side, both of the Mosquitoes did get forced back by the AA, so Presto John's seeing that he is free to go in for this attack. Probably going to look to take out one of the Fireflies with this IL-2M. That's what I would suspect. TU-2S most likely going to go for the Rifle Squad. Yep, takes them out. Good stuff. The Gavardi DP here, again, could easily keep pushing forwards into these weakened rifle squads backed up by a lot of armor. I feel like Presto John just isn't pushing hard enough. He could very much seal the deal at this point in the game and take a game off Gonzo if he just pushed up with this armor. I don't know why he's so nervous. I assume it's because of 17 pounders, but he has already killed quite a few of them. And there's going to be a limited number of cards that Gonzo has. Especially since this is a 1v1 deck, 17 pounders are not that common because they just don't really have the large targets. And 6 pounders do the job cheaper most of the time. Another IL-2. That didn't end up firing its rockets. That would be because it lost line of sight onto the Firefly. SE-152 on the way. Gavardi DP still trying to fight this off. I'm surprised this Gavardi is falling back. Yeah, again, I'm very concerned about Presto John's lack of aggression on the top side. He is maintaining the 15 to 9, which is good. But maybe it's just because, again, he doesn't want to waste his infantry. Because he probably has none left. He's being overly cautious. T-34-85 does take out a Sherman 3. But the Firefly will be able to fire first. Does get the shot off. The penetrating shot from the 1943 doesn't get the kill. So the Firefly will win this engagement. T-34-85 goes down. Unless that was like a close range miss. Which is very unlikely. That T-34-85 was definitely not going to win. Due to its lack of rate of fire. IL-2 again. Struggling to get line of sight onto the Firefly. Uh, Gavardia in very, very low on health here. I really don't think that Presto John has much to replace them. He just needs to be like throwing his weight through the top side where he has all of this armor advantage. And that's, that's what would give him uh, the ability to finish the game. At the moment, I'm a bit worried that Gonzo is going to be able to come back from this. T-34-85 though does take out the Firefly on the hill. So nice kill there. IL-2. Did that manage to get its rockets off? Now under fire from the Bofors. It just doesn't look like it hit anything on that bottom side. Mosquito taking a lot of damage. IL-2 taking a lot of damage. T-2S comes in with the bombing strike. And that bombing strike hit the mark. IL-2 gets the rockets off. Doesn't get any kills. The IL-2 AT planes that rely on the four rockets are kind of bad in general. I'm not a massive fan of them. Because you do really need to hit those rockets in order to uh, get the victories. Now, Stag Hound AA is there joining in. Might cause this TU-2S to 
get shut down. The TU2S has been flying around without a payload for a little while. When I suspected it dropped to, dropped bombs, I think it already had previously to that. So, yeah, that's not too great. SU-152 actually blows up the Firefly with a HE round. Very cool. Uh, now this SU-152 in trouble, though. Can do some damage with its HE, but it looks like Presto John's are going to try and move it away. Messes up the micro. It goes down. Now the off-map vehicle going to die as well, although the off-map there has probably run out. Or not run out. Well, yeah, it has run out of strikes, probably. Uh, so there are more infantry. What's going on? Why is this... I'm, a, I'm very confused right now. He's moving all of his armor from the top side to the bottom side to counter the push from Gonzo in the town. That is a strange move, mainly for the fact that it actually takes away his advantage in an armored engagement. If he had the T-3485s pushed down here towards the town where his infantry were covering him, he could get then side shots or shots into behind this cover whilst also pushing down here pincering these shermans and sherman 5 dds and killing them off now of course he doesn't really have line of sight onto those shermans right now so he wouldn't know exactly where they are maybe he's just a bit worried about at guns uh, being in position to stop his push but until you try you never know and moving this all this armor to the bottom side just to me it seems like a massive mistake because he leaves the top side so vulnerable to an infantry push and his infantry without the support are going to get taken down still 13 to 11 Prester John's still in the game uh, he has a massive ticket lead so I mean Prester John could still take it but this armor move is very very strange indeed Sherman's now pushing up on top following each rifle squad individually Again, making sure these infantry squads are supported by armor is the main staple of both of these divisions. But moving the armor away from your infantry, well, to me, just seems like a bad choice in general. More six pounders on the way. They're looking to get up on top of this ridge and maybe take out the T 3485 at close range. Rifle squad goes down, though, as more Cavardia arrive. New Cavardia on the top side. This could just be like the last little bit of infantry. If it's not the last little bit of infantry and Presto John had more, then he probably should have won already. Because he would have been much more confident to keep pushing forwards. This IL-2 taking a lot of damage at the moment. Can the Bofors finish the job? Yes, it can. IL-2 goes down. Three star bofers, that is scary. And also two three star stack count AAs. Those things have a lot of suppression. Sherman 3 trading with the T3485. Gonna back off from that engagement. That's not an engagement you really want to take. The T3485s do trump the Shermans pretty well indeed. For Sherman though, that's going for some sort of charge attack. Okay, both players very hesitant to take that engagement. D3485 here. Now trying to deal with the priest. The priest? That fired so far off and the T3485 cleans it up nicely. Still five minutes until victory for Prester John. Bedford goes down. That's a mistake from Gonzo. Doesn't want to lose any infantry unnecessarily. SU-76 is on the way. They're going to be taking shots at the Sherman. Do miss the side shot. That's unfortunate. Mosquito coming in with the bombing strike. Was trying to take care of that T-3485, but the T-3485 goes down anyway. That must have been the Sherman 3 in the town that got the job done there. Nice double kill onto the SU-76 MPTs from the Sherman 3 as well. Starting to look a bit desperate on the side of Presta John. IL-2. Can it kill the Sherman? Some of these IL-2s have really got to start counting. 
That one's definitely not. It's going to go down. I don't think I've ever seen one of these IL-2s with four rockets, one past a tank. And that's really, really bad. Another one on the way. These aren't cheap. They're 120 points each. Doesn't have line of sight. Flies straight into the AA. Gets a weapon jam crit. That's probably going down. Mosquito is forced to fall back as well. That's two 37s there now. Three star veneracy. Both players are going to be losing their aircraft. It is now 14 to 10 in favor of Gonzo. Gonzo has complete control of the bottom side town. I would not be surprised if Presta John is completely out of infantry. Whilst Gonzo is now pushing in with more rifles on the top side. He has two more Sherman 3s coming in. The six pounder on the ridge here does take out the T-3485. Things are now 14 to 10 in favor of Gonzo. So Gonzo will win the game in 29 minutes, which is a long way off. But honestly, Presta John doesn't have much more to give. Those bombers trying to take out more of the rifles just cut down on Gonzo's infantry availability so that this can become an armor fight and maybe Presta John can bring it back. But even Presta John's armor will be low on availability as well because he's relying on two star T-3485s. And this removes a lot of veterancy, on sorry, a lot of availability from the card. That's why he's probably focusing on bringing in these SU-152s. Now there's one more unit at Cavalia, an OB arriving on the bottom side. These Shermans are managing to get on top of the 37mm AA. And with the AA going down, that will be open doors for the Mosquitoes coming for bombing strikes. That's an expensive loss from Presta John. Rifles versus Gavardia. The Gavardia are three-star veterans, so they're going to be doing a lot of damage. There is another 37 further up that's been hammering away. But nice kill from the six-pounder. Pops the T-34 in the open. Nice side shot there. Lovely stuff. Looks like Presta John is making a bit of ground. He's got his one Gavardia unit moving forwards. That's engaging enemy infantry. And it's backed up by the T-34s. This is how you gotta do it. This is what's this is what works. I'm surprised he didn't do it earlier on the top side. But he's now doing it in the town. Maybe that will be enough to get back the flags he needs to win the game. Because Presta John is still very close to doing it. Gavardia, unfortunately in line of sight of that Sherman 3, will take a lot of damage because of it. Both players just look completely on their last legs right now. More rifles though, coming in from Gonzo, two six-pounders, just an abundance of AT guns. So I don't think Prestigeon was necessarily in a bad position to suspect the amount of AT guns that Gonzo had, but he didn't even go to check. But that's, I think that's the biggest thing that I'm disappointed about with Presta John's play here, is that he had the opportunity on the so top side and didn't pull the trigger. He instead decided to react where Gonzo was pushing, and that has left him in a position where Gonzo now has more flags than he does. So 122 mil coming in. That can certainly pop Sherman's left, right, and center with some decent veterancy. But without infantry to lead the charge, you put yourself in an awkward position. T-34 has moved up here. Needs to get the kill onto the Sherman 3. Bombing strike does hit the Gavardia DP. Spitfire with two 110 kilogram bombs removes the main part of that push. Cutting down the infantry leaves the tanks very vulnerable. T-34 now going down up here. Six pounder takes care of that and it's looking pretty much over right now the two the 120 the OB the two SU-152s took out the Sherman but in terms of availability of stuff yeah Gonzo's in the driving seat and he's sitting on that 13 to 11 Sherman 3 pushing back the Gavardi even more here very healthy rifle squads that can continue to push through on that top side and take a lot of flags there if you wanted to. Oh, lovely jubbly. The T-3485 takes out one of those Sherman 3s. The other Sherman fails to reply. 
I think this could still come down to like, who has like armor left. These SU-152s, a lot of pressure on this front line right now, and they can be cleaned up very easily. Mosquito can strafe those. Sherman 5 can pop them at a distance. Uh, TU-2Ss are coming in with the bombing strikes. Spitfire doesn't manage to shoot down this one yet. That bombing strike kind of hit, missed the mark there. Managed to take out the one on the ridge, though, which is going to give him a flag back. Spitfire... Is going to kill the TU-2S though, and a big old salient happening in the middle as the two SU-152s go down. Preston John's going to try and hold that with a single unit, or maybe two units, of leaders. This 3 also dies. That's another flag in favour of Gonzo. Things are falling apart. Preston John just ran out of units before Gonzo did. Gonzo's flatline outlasting him. And his deck most likely consisting of more armor, or more infantry, sorry, uh, in the form of these rifle squads. In the late game, like a late base C card of rifles can really make the difference. And in this case, I think that's what it was. Preston John surrenders and a minor victory for Gonzo after 42 minutes and 43 seconds. 4,855 kills to 3,780 losses. So... Presta John, I feel like really through that game, he definitely had like the advantage. He had the flag advantage, 14 to 10, 15 to 9, he was double ticking, and he had armor and, and infantry superiority on the top side that he didn't push in with. If he'd continued his aggression up there, then Gonzo would have been forced to react, and that would have given him the time to just maintain that fight long enough that he wins the game. And that's all it took, or all it, all it would have taken, to get the job done. So it feels like a bit of a throw on the side of Preston John, unfortunately. Uh, putting a lot of pressure onto Gonzo like that, though, really big thumbs up. Uh, it's not often you see Gonzo in that kind of position, and uh, I'd like to see more of that from Preston John in this best of three series. Off map, killing a couple T-34s there is pretty nice. Uh, this Firefly killing two 1943. Our T-34 85s is good. These Sherman 3s getting a lot of kills. And you can see in the most case, the kills go down to the, the medium armor. The infantry doesn't trade that well. In some cases, they might get a few kills here and there. But it mostly comes down to the fact that the Shermans are backing them up. And you'll see the same on the other side. It's going to be mostly the T-34s that are p picking up the kills onto the enemy infantry as opposed to the infantry themselves. Some of this Gavardia did get a lot of good kills because they were given veterancy, and the veterancy use on the side of Presser John was much stronger than Gonzo, which I think is what overall gave him a massive advantage uh, in the early game. Either way, that is it for this one. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. That was a very, very fun game to watch. Preston John nearly taking out Gonzo. But next up will be game two between these two players. Hope you guys look forward to it. That's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.